Good evening. Welcome to For the Record. Preparations are underway for the 2018 elections, which is expected to be held any time between April and November next year. It is estimated that around $32 million will be needed to hold the general elections. $22.1 million was allocated in the 2017-2018 national budget, with a balance expected once a decision is made on the election date. Joining me tonight to discuss our preparations for the 2018 elections is the Electoral Commission Chairperson, Mr. Suresh Chandra, and the Supervisor of Elections, Mr. Mohammed Sanim. Thank you for joining me on the show. Thank you. Thank you, right. Thank you sir. Let's start by discussing the budget and the dates, because I've seen two possible dates uh, banded around, and you may be the best one to tell us. Early this year, the Attorney General, Mr. for Elections, stated in Parliament it will be held between April 6th and September 6th, while delivering the budget. He said the elections can take place between May and November. Which is it, and does it make a difference? Actually, elections can take place uh, from three years, six months. Mm. Uh, from Which is April. From the date of first sitting of uh, Parliament. So ideally, the writ can be issued in April, after the 6th of April. So uh, if the writ is issued, then there is 44 days till the election. So it can take you up to no a May date for elections. OK, great. So that clarifies that. Now, for an overview of the process, so if you can just tell the process. Once the PM decides, because the PM is the one who decides yeah. when's when the date of the next election, once he has made up his mind, okay, this is the date for the election, what does he do? Well, uh, the PM will then uh, recommend it to the president. Yeah. And the president of the day uh, will issue the writ. And the writ will be then delivered to the Electoral Commission. Okay, mm -hmm. so Prime Minister to President, President will then inform you that Yes. The, this is the writ of elections, the, the election date. Eh? That's correct. What does the commission do from there? Well, the commission starts uh, rolling uh, the procedures that are required under the Electoral Act uh, that uh, the, uh, the election uh, must take place. Then we have all these um, nominations, nominations uh, coming in and nominations closing. We need to deal with uh, objections. We need to deal with... Uh, decision making with the objections and and then finalizing the can number of candidates uh, that will stand for the election. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So the previous electoral commission lapsed out of existence in January this year. Yeah, you you're yes. just five months uh, on the job. Yes, right. Uh, you you're the chair of the new of the electoral commission. Yes. Concern was expressed by some parties that the commission may not have the time to adequately prepare for the 2018 elections. Do you have enough time to prepare for the elections? Uh, yes, we, we do. Uh, we, are, we, we are always uh, running against the time, but we, we understand that uh, quite a lot of work has already been done. Uh, we have uh, reached a stage where voter registration is almost complete, but it will still uh, be done a few months before the uh, election itself. And all the uh, preparation for training uh, is being done. And uh, we are also doing uh, the awareness ca campaign, which is going on. And uh, there are a few other things that are like uh, all those reports that came in uh, for review. We have all re reviewed all those reports. And the reports are, uh, we have made decisions on those reports. So we, we are on the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we on track, Mr. Sanim, from the Supervisor of Elections, the implementing arm? Yes, I think one of the things to understand is that an election is a massive project mm. that is divided into smaller projects. Mm. And uh, the Electoral Commission, uh, being the supervisory body, approves a lot of the outcomes of the projects. The things that the Fijian Elections Office does is approved by the Electoral Commission. And in that regard, um, the work since 2014 did not stop. Mm. And uh, you would realize that uh, in March this year, the Electoral Commission approved a provisional publication of all the polling venues around the country. So uh, if you look at an election, um, it's to do with polling places, voters, and then it's to do with um, voting day, then voting, counting, and results, and then allocation of seats, right. and then repeat. So we're on track. So for that yes. April or May to November date, we can have it. You're on track to get the everything done by then. The Electoral Commission has endorsed our plans to be ready and mm -hmm. stand by is at 1st of April. 1st of April. Yes. So all systems are ready, uh, are in being starting to roll now. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, as we've seen, and we'll discuss some of them later, particularly voter registration. Let's discuss the budget. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So 22.1 million allocated. Total cost around 31.4 is the exact figure given yes. by the uh, Minister for Economy, uh, yes. who is also Minister for Elections. There's a balance of $9.3 million will be released uh, if elections are held before August 2018. Okay. Uh, if it's not, then it'll be allocated for the 2018-2019 fiscal year. Are you okay with that arrangement? Yes, um, as the mm -hmm. earlier statement was, that we would like to be ready on 1st of April. And uh, as a matter of good practice, funding has been sufficiently allocated for us to be uh, ready uh, as at the standby date. And uh, sufficient funding has been made uh, available to us. So 21.4 million now, uh, 20, 22.1 million, 20 sorry. How do, uh, you know, that's what you have now. How do you intend to, to use it or, or break it up leading up to the elections? What are the key priority areas that you will plan to cover with this 22.1 million? So mm. this falls in the operations side of things. Yes. Uh, Stanley, one of the key things in an election is the 10,000 or so staff that will deliver the election. And for us to recruit the 10,000 staff and then train them, i uh, just tell you some of the logistics things. Mm. So we'll have to get approximately 17,000 applications and we will be setting up about 15 centers around the country to recruit staff in these areas. Mm. And then we have to train all of these staff. Uh, so they will be trained in about 900 training sessions. That's so quite something. Yeah, quite so, an operation. so to explain the logistics, this is a good uh, example to show how massive the exercise is. And then there is a refresher training for those who are selected. Uh, especially the presiding officers and the assistant presiding officers, that will happen closer to the election. So there's another 300 trainings. Mm. So it is necessary that when, when, when a large quantity of people are working in the election, that they are consistently trained on electoral procedures that have been designed. And uh, for this exercise, the, there's a budget, uh, budget is going to be a, a, a lump sum amount because um, of the Do you process know the involved. Amount? What's the allocation? Um, I cannot tell you at the moment, uh, off the top of my head, but it's a substantial sum. The other thing Just is on the officials and the training, eh? yes. because these are people that have to be really well trained yes. on how to handle things on the day. Yes, because consistency is the most important thing. Mm. When voters come and line up at the polling station, they will expect to be treated in a similar manner as in 2014 because nothing has changed, literally. So um, that is one of the things. The other thing is we have to get... Yeah, you hold that thought on the yeah. other thing. Yeah. We'll, it's a massive exercise. Uh, you're mm. watching for the record on the preparations for the 2018 elections. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to For the Record. We've been discussing the major components that will make up the preparations for the 2018 elections. Uh, Mr. Mohammed Sanim, Supervisor of Elections. We talked about the training of the officials. That's mm -hmm. quite a component. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it again? 900, 900 training, training sessions? Yes. And uh, what are the other major components that you were going to discuss? So the other part of elections is the logistics exercise. This is a very large logistics exercise, taking materials to 2,100 polling stations and then bringing them all back, and uh, taking them under scrutiny and returning them under scrutiny. So that exercise uh, is also um, quite a substantial cost, and uh, that is pre-election preparations uh, that the Fijian Elections Office has to cater for. All right. And what are your key timelines for this? When do you intend to do the training by and have all those uh, issues out of the way? So recruitment of staff starts on the 28th of July this year. Mm. And uh, we... You've put ads out on that, yes, haven't you? Yes. yes, we have been... Uh, we take this opportunity to invite anyone who is interested to please apply. Uh, we're uh, looking for good, uh, honest uh, persons uh, who have the commitment to, to work and be part of the elections to deliver the 2018 elections. So, um, the training is going to take place thereafter. So the first rounds of training should finish by November this year. And then we will have a December, January, and then February we'll have the second round of refresher trainings. So those are some of the plans. Uh, concrete plans uh, will be made public uh, following the approval of the commission at its September meeting. All right. You recently concluded the 2017 nationwide voter registration drive. Yes. How successful was that? Uh, the total number of engagements that we received was 240,152. Uh, that's nearly 50% of the entire voter roll, and that is a very good sign. Mm. And uh, we're very pleased with the outcome. 
uh, shows that there is a huge amount of interest in terms of elections. Do you have the, uh, what was the number of the total registered voters in 2014? Was it 590,101. Okay, so for those who registered in 2014, do they have to register again? No. They don't have to. Yes. So these are new registrations. So the 240,000 engagements is of people who may have already been registered and those who are newly registered, right. uh, they, they access some sort of ex service from our, our centers. All right. So what's your estimation about the number of people that's left uh, to be registered? Do you have that? Or mm -hmm. We're looking at 620,000 chair? Mm, yes, I think so. Uh, the, 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 there are so many people still there, which uh, I think uh, we have to get to them very soon. Yes. So uh, for those who haven't registered, what would be your message to them? What should they be doing now? Because uh, it's th currently suspended. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. w w what's the reason for the suspension at the moment? So as I said, we've had 240,000 engagements, and that's data for 240,000 voters that now needs to be entered into the system, and then the system has to be uh, run to make sure we identify any duplicates or any persons who may have to be removed from the voter register. And then thereafter, 25th of July, we will start the the we'll open the registration process again so that the up-to-date systems are available on all our uh, community, all, all our voter service centers for people to access. So it's mm -hmm. just to update the data in all the laptop kits. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they need to, uh, it'll be resuming, when will that be resuming? 25th of on July. On the 25th of July. Eh? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, your awareness program, mm -hmm. how effective has that, uh, has that come, come about? Uh, so far, particularly what you, what you found out with the voter mm -hmm. registration process? Well, awareness, uh, the, that has been um, uh, part of the uh, policy that we, we have in the commission, that the everybody uh, who is entitled to vote over 18 and of any other age, uh, maximum age, any, any age, and who is a Fiji citizen, uh, they, are, they are entitled to be registered at vote, and we are, we are targeting that everyone who is there should be able to come and register with the uh, registry uh, with the, so the supervisor of elections office, and uh, we we anticipate that um, some people will may m get missed out. We don't know, but um, we will do our best. And the regist registration drive is going on. Now the awareness, we have issued uh, um, handbooks uh, for the public to have a look at that. We have uh, been advertising in the news newspapers, radio, and all other media. And uh, we, we are targeting each and every possible uh, voter who is entitled. So we are still doing that, and we continue to do that uh, at least a month before the election itself. So mm -hmm. For the 2018 election, Mm -hmm. The uh, awareness, house to house awareness, especially starting from the rural areas coming mm -hmm. down to the mm -hmm. urban areas, uh, yeah. is uh, scheduled to start in January. Uh, this is so that we've prepared the voter uh, to vote. And then once the date is finalized, then we will look at uh, creating awareness in terms What do you voting. mean prepare the voter to vote, if you could explain? That. So mm -hmm. for a voter to vote, they need to know how to vote, uh, mm -hmm. when to vote is what we will have to wait for, where to vote, and um, the, the voter needs to be aware that all Fijians should vote. So this is what we need to do. We have to create that awareness. We created this kind of awareness in 2014, and the result was 99.24% valid votes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So y what are you doing differently from 2014? I noticed now that you've, uh, I saw somewhere that you're actually um, uh, willing to go to people's offices to register people. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, one mm -hmm. of the things we're doing is we're taking services to uh, different places so that people can access them easily. Um, some t as you know, Stanley, at this moment in time, elections is not on everybody's mind. We're one year away at, at least, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we're trying to uh, slot in this interest uh, whilst people have other daily considerations. So mm -hmm. we're trying to create access to these things. And then most of the complaints that have on the day is because people haven't prepared now yes. for the polling mm -hmm. st station and, and such. Eh? Yes. Uh, we hope that in 2018, few people call up and say, where is this place? Because they, you can actually now go on your mobile, on our website, and you can search your venue, and you can get a m uh, map directions on how to get there. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that's so there. Technology being used to um, 
get ready for the 2018 national <laughs> elections. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you haven't registered, please register. You're watching for the record. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. You're watching for the record. We will get to other issues on the registration process and recruitment and voter turnout later in the show. For now, let's address some of the claims and criticisms that have been made against the Electoral Commission. You will, yes. of course, know about the coalition of five political parties who have made yes. some recommendations and are unhappy with some of your decisions, mm -hmm. mainly to do with the multinational observer group or so-called MOG yes. recommendations. And there were yes. 38 recommendations. Uh, yes. Uh, You've implemented in Action 19 of the 38. Yes. And you've said you have no jurisdiction over nine. Yes. You've rejected 10 of the recommendations. Yes. If you can please explain the process you undertook to come to these decisions, particularly uh, the ones that you rejected or said you didn't have jurisdiction over. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for that, Stanley. Um, the commission, as you know, is established in uh, February. A new second commission came in the picture in uh, February this year. Mm. And uh, the, there are all six uh, new commission members, uh, all commissions or commissioners appointed in February. And the first task was uh, this report that we had. There were three reports available. Um, and two initially, then later the political parties made their own submissions. Um, we had the multi-observer group report. We had this, um, the 2014, um, the uh, uh, previous commission's, commission's uh, report. report. Yeah. And then we um, invited the political parties to bring in whatever they wanted to submit. So they did submit uh, their own views and uh, uh, submissions, which uh, we considered. And uh, in February, March, and April, we kept uh, on the uh, focus on those three reports, right. on the commission focused it. And the fo that focus has been g there for, for a while. And um, we discussed the uh, three reports very, very thoroughly in the commission itself. And uh, we came out with the uh, results that we uh, have already submitted to the Standing Parliamentary, uh, Parliamentary Select Committee on S Human Rights. So let's discuss the nine, yes. uh, not in, in detail for each of them, we mm. don't have the yeah. time, but yeah. the yeah. nine that you've, you've handed over to the Standing Committee to make yeah. these decisions on, the ones yes. that you have yes. no jurisdiction. Well, when you say you don't have any jurisdiction, what, what do you mean? Jurisdiction, uh, I mean, in technical term, it means that we cannot change the law, right? Uh, and uh, we cannot uh, uh, recommend to change the law uh, because the law is something different at the moment there. Because so that's the mm -hmm. that's the mm -hmm. criticism being made yes. by the um, by the five political parties. Yes. Is that they argue that you, the electoral commission, you have the constitutional responsibility. Mm -hmm. Under, uh, 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 in the words, under Section 75 of the Constitution to yes. deliver free and fair elections and therefore you need to be more proactive in this regard. That you could yes. be much stronger yes. in pushing for this rather than saying we can't handle that. Well, the thing is, uh, it's, a, it's a time frame that we are looking at because the, uh, the, there is a already an existing written law which we are supposed to be following. Mm. There's a constitution, there is electoral act and all those places and uh, we, we are uh, bound by the law itself. But if we, are sta we start recommending the changes in the law, uh, when the election is only about a year away, um, then uh, what will happen to the, uh, the existing law? So we need to enforce that existing law and on the, on the basis of that existing law, we need to train the poll workers, we need to train everybody, we need to have create awareness with the voters. We need to do that without any changes in the law. Uh, but so if, 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 if we so keep it too long, it's the, that's not, uh, it's, it will not be able to change the law and uh, voters get confused. So are there current laws that hinder the holding of free and fair elections? No. We, as far as we are concerned, no. Because the, uh, the 2014 election was uh, done very fairly and clearly and uh, was very well uh, declared as a credible election Because itself. this is what the party is saying, that if you saw a law that is hindering the efforts for a free and fair election, mm -hmm. it is your responsibility, in their view, as the Electoral Commission, to tell government to change the law to ensure the transparency and integrity of the election. These are their words. Uh, that you should be able to tell government 
this law needs to change for this election to be free and fair. What's your yes. view on that? The view is that the Commission thinks that we cannot uh, recommend those changes at, at this stage. Uh, uh, I mean, there may be uh, in the future we can have a look at that, but not, not now because the, the, the election is not very far away. So we need to have that consistency in our approach and uh, credibility in our approach, make sure that everything is transparent and everybody is uh, brought in uh, on the basis of what is the current law at the moment. So the, you've said that you've been asking for views from these political parties. So these yes. views from this you have received? Eh? I, I yes. Uh, they they said they've been writing to the Electoral Commission several times of the years and then recently. Uh, and also particularly on allegedly, alleged irregularities and impartiality of the Commission and Supervisor of Elections. Uh, you know, you recently dismissed it as, as politics. No, no, that's not correct. That they have not been writing uh, to us. To us, we actually called them on two occasions to present their submissions, and they they did come and they presented their own submissions with the written submissions already submitted earlier. So they have been given full opportunity to to, to argue. The participated propose. Mm -hmm. They uh, they said. Uh, Th they said that um, they've written on this issue to you several times, mm -hmm. but that you've dismissed the issues as all about politics. You have also said that they have no evidence to support their claims of voting irregularities in the 2014 elections, that it is without merit and substance. How much time and opportunity did you give to them to support their claims and provide evidence? Oh, that, they, they had about almost more than three months to, to present that, but, but that earlier, the 2014 uh, Electoral Commission, they raised that issue again at that time, and they had uh, uh, had the opp opportunity for so many months, or almost more than a year, or maybe two, three years, to present those, um, uh, what you call, uh, the evidence of irregularities. And uh, we also gave them opportunity in the meeting, the two meetings that we had, the Commission had with them, they could not come up with any uh, evidence at all about irregularities. None at all? None at all. So it's mainly a lot of claims and allegations it's that have no substance? It's all only allegations. There's nothing, nothing in substance. One of the, uh, before we go to the break, one of the other concerns that they, they said that they experienced in 2014 mm -hmm. and that they want the Electoral Commission to change is that the electoral rules and regulations kept changing even after the writ of elections was issued in 2014 and that this provided what they said was ni nasty surprises for these participating parties. And they wanted to ensure that, uh, that uncertainty, they wanted, to, wanted a process that, ensure, that, did not, uh, that ensured certainty, sorry. Yes. Did you consider that? Of course, uh, as, as I earlier said, mm -hmm. uh, that we, we are not considering any changes in the law at the moment. Right. And uh, we must have that consistency going on into the election. And uh, we, we cannot uh, consider changing any election uh, laws uh, very near to the election. So we have di that is why we had to consider those three reports uh, as soon as possible and we did that. We did that in so many meetings that we had and we threshed it out. We accepted 19 of the accommodations and uh, we clarified that. Uh, in, clarified in, uh, them, uh, eh? Exactly, yes. So like one of the issues they raised was that um, they would be campaigning yes. and then they'd be called, you need to file in this paper or this certain, uh, mm. would that be correct? Uh, would did that happen in 2014? I think one mm. of the things to clarify is that in the 2018 general election, because laws are made by parliament, since the the parliament, once the parliament is dissolved, you cannot make any more laws. So this mm. uh, speculation that laws will be changed after the writ is issued mm. is uh, doesn't hold water because there won't be any parliament in fact to make the laws. All right. Did that happen in 2014? In 2014, the amendments to the laws were brought in before the writ was issued. Okay, before the writ was yes. issued. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in fact, one of the mm -hmm. amendments was to define what is ordinarily resident for two years. What, is the def what, is, what does it mean to be ordinarily resident in Fiji for two years? And if you look at the interpretation before the, uh, interpre the law was clarified, you would have had to assess to be resident in Fiji for 24 months. But then the law was clarified to say you have to be re resident in Fiji for 18 months. Okay. So it was made more favorable for candidates. So, so okay. those issues. Uh, we are uh, clarifying yeah. the mm. some complicated issues related to the upcoming election, national elections, which we expect to hope to be more smooth. 
You're watching For the Record. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to For the Record. We are with the um, Supervisor of Elections, Mr. Mohamed Sanim, and the Electoral Commission Chairperson, Mr. Suresh Chandra. Now, one of the key issues that was raised uh, by the political parties was about the involvement of the Supervisor of Elections, Mr. Mohamed Sanim. Recommendation 7, they, they addressed that the, that the Electoral Commission the supervisor of elections is bound by the decisions of the electoral commission and according to the parties in 2014 mr sanim did not adhere to this where he disobeyed in their words the directive of the commission which resulted in the issue that was at the court of appeal they say therefore that his appointment is not justified but you have stood by him please outline the commission's confidence in the supervisor of elections uh, well, first of all, the uh, the matter is still in the court at mm. the moment. It's sub judice to okay. uh, make comments on that. It's still before the court. It's yeah. still before the court. It's before but the Supreme Court. Uh, that's correct. Right. Yes. And uh, secondly, uh, the uh, appointment of the supervisor and uh, appointment of the commission is all done by the Constitutional Officers Commission uh, through the president. Right. So they, they are uh, the ones they appoint, and uh, the supervisor of elections is appointed by the Constitutional Officers Commission under the Constitution itself. So, um, and uh, he, uh, Mr. Sanim, is, uh, is appointed by that commission. A constitutional appointment. That's correct, right. yes. So and tell me, for the issue of this, uh, of this recommendation seven, and that to clarify the rules yeah. of the electoral commission, and the Office of the Supervisor of Elections. Mm -hmm. Has that been clarified, or is that still awaiting the court decision? No, it has been clarified by the law itself. Uh, in February 2017 uh, amendment in, uh, parliament, yeah. in the parliament, uh, the uh, law has been very much, uh, it says that the, uh, the, the supervisor is now the secretary of the commission, and supervisor is the one who takes instructions uh, and from the commission itself. So it's only when the issue of... So he's bound by the directives of the commission. Directives, yes. Yeah. Directives given by the commission. So because commission the issue of him being the secretary is actually another issue that's been raised by the political parties. And, um, Mr. Sanim is sitting right here, but we will proceed with the discussion. Yes. Uh, that he should not be secretary of the commission, that you should appoint your own secretary to maintain your independence. Why is that not an issue? We, we are totally independent under the constitution itself. Uh, we are a totally a political uh, commission. The, what the law says in uh, the 2017 amendment is that he becomes the secretary. Uh, why? Because it was one of the recommendations made by the uh, MOG report. It said there were, there were uh, dissociations with the supervisor and the commission. There should be some sort of a administrative link there should be that link. Link there. And that link is the supervisor becoming the secretary of the commission. So uh, when his issues arise in the commission, then he is out of the commission. But uh, all other work, the, uh, the, there is a liaison between the so secretary. There's a clear demarcation of roles. Yes, it is the, very, very clear. That's what the amendment has done. Mr. Sanim, do you have any problem being the secretary of the commission? Well, in fact, I welcome uh, the opportunity to be able to um, address the commission on a lot of procedural yeah, what's, what's issues. What's the positive of you being in there? Yes, uh, it gives us a good indication of the commission's positions on various procedural matters that I look after. Uh, the law has clearly stated a lot of responsibilities in terms of delivering a lot of election-related uh, outputs mm -hmm. to the supervisor of elections. And, and being part of the commission allows me, as secretary, to put these across to the commission and obtain views of the commissioners uh, before we proceed on to any of these. And it makes a very clear line of uh, discussion and opens up the actually communication channels with the commission. And this is something that is uh, a, a um, positive for my office. Uh, because uh, it's easier for us to now uh, correspond with the commission and mm. obtain the necessary uh, policies that we need uh, to, to action the, the requirements of the elections. All right. Let's more look, move on now to another topic. Let's look at some of the MOG recommendations that you've taken on board and accepted. Eh? Yeah. One is that the commission will publish a calendar of events and key dates for the next general election. So how is that coming along and when can people expect to see that? 
Well, we already um, have approved uh, the uh, calendar of events, but it's not uh, made public yet. Uh, but uh, that will be made uh, public very soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will, in the calendar, there will be details of uh, what the commission is going to do uh, up to the, r to the election itself. That's right. And, and, and another of the recommendations was the intensifying of the awareness programs. Eh? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the different things. What are you doing differently from 2014? One significant uh, um, thing that is different is that we are trying to uh, draw up a curriculum to be incorporated into school programs so that students at school level are able to uh, understand uh, elections and, uh, and become more informed before they register. Okay. So that's one significant Because of a big chunk with uh, 18 young years voters, old, yes. yes, young voters. Young voters. And the 18, other 18. thing is that uh, there, is a, there is a need to continuously alert uh, the ordinary voter that elections is every four years and that the voter needs to be prepared for it. Um, we have had a history, which I don't have to repeat to you, uh, and it is important that people know that there is an election around the corner where their voices are Get to be heard. Get their voices heard. Yes. yes. You're watching For the Record. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. You're watching For the Record. Now, the Parliament has amended the Electoral Act in February this year to allow the supervisor of elections to distribute postal ballots by the best practical means. This is one of the recommendations that has been accepted. Eh? Yes. Uh, you accepted it, but you've said you've developed an alternative solution. What is your alternative solution? So the Multinational Observer Group report recommended that the period for postal voting is extended. And uh, uh, whilst that is an option, the alternative was to make postal voting delivery and retrieval um, more accessible. So what uh, we will do now is that, say, for the interior of Viti Levu, the, the nearest, say, uh, Nita Siri area, the nearest post office would be Vunindawa. So even if somebody does apply, they have to come all the way down to Vunindawa to get their ballot paper and then return the envelope. So now the opportunity is there for us to say, right, this is the number of ballot papers from Bunindawa. We will put it in the envelope. We'll put it necessary seals and everything, and then we will hand deliver. And there'll be awareness. Yes. Big awa awareness program exactly. on that to, to make that better. Yes, and that's yeah. an alternative. So um, rather than saying, oh, a lot of the nurses and doctors in 2014 said that, oh, we didn't get the ballot paper. We are in the hospital. Hmm. Uh, the alternative now is for us to make a batch for all the hospitals, deliver it to the hospital registrar and then say we'll come back and collect it in five days time and in five days time we go and collect it so we are hoping that these changes allow us to do it by best practical to, to strengthen um, the people's participation yes. in the process eh? now mr chandra leading mm. up to the 2014 elections questions were raised about mm. the independence and integrity yeah. of the electoral commission uh, in ensuring on carrying out uh, free fair and credible elections mm -hmm. questions you know by, by some parties are, are continue to be raised what assurance can you give as a chairman of the Electoral Commission that you will carry your duties out responsibil responsibly to ensure free, fair and credible elections? Well, Stanley, uh, first of all, uh, we, as I said, uh, we have been appointed uh, by the Constitutional Officers Commission under the Constitution itself. And the Constitution itself says that uh, the Commission must remain totally impartial must be totally apolitical and uh, must uh, uh, conduct free and fair elections in accordance with the written law governing the election or any other relevant law, in particular going to registration of citizens uh, as voters, voter education and all, all that. Yeah. So we are supposed to be following the law and we are supposed to be impartial, totally impartial. Under the section uh, 13 of the Electoral Act, it says, Members of the Electoral Commission, the supervisor, and all election officials, including the uh, employees, agents, contractors of the Fijian Elections Office, must conduct their duties, functions, exercise their powers with utmost impartiality yeah. and in compliance with the law and the Constitution. So are you so very confident that the process is mm -hmm. transparent? Accountable and it has integrity. Yes, it is. Uh, we no we changing of the rules or the goalposts, as some have argued. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not uh, we, once we start doing that, that's where the problem will start. 
Yes. So what we have done is uh, we have now clarified what the law is, and, and then we are now going to act accordingly. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sanim, we have 60 seconds. What's coming up next? What should voters look out for next in July and August? I think the most important thing for me to highlight in these 60 seconds is that we invite any eligible Fijian who wishes to work with us and deliver the 2018 general election to take this opportunity now and come and uh, participate in the uh, recruitment exercise. Uh, we are going to hire individuals on the basis of the merits and if they have the, the merits they will be hired. So please come and apply and we look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. The Supervisor of Elections, Mr. Mohamed Sanim and the Chairman of the Electoral Commission, Mr. Suresh Chandra. Thank you for joining me on For the Record. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. That was uh, For the Record for the evening. We hope you enjoyed the show and will join us again next Sunday at the same time.